بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم السلام علیکم و رحمۃ اللہ وبرکاتہ ویلکم ٹو آن لائن کلاسز آف اقرا افواز بائی سیکنڈری اسکول آ پروجیکٹ آف اقرا ایجوکیشن سسٹم مائی ڈیئر اسٹوڈنٹس ان دس ویڈیو سیشن ٹوڈے وی ول لرن اباؤٹ آ گرامر ٹاپک وچ از ان فرنٹ آف یو آن دا اسکرین ایکٹیو او پیس اے وائس This question is an integral part of your board paper format and this question is asked in the first question in MCQs. If you have the clear concept of this topic and you can solve an active sentence into passive sentence, automatically you can also attempt the multiple choice question of active and passive words. So before we further go ahead and I tell you the reasons and rules of passive voice, I'll tell you the definition of it. What are active and passive sentences? In active sentence, subject is doer of action while object is receiver of an action. So far you have clearly understood in classes 6, 7 and 8 what are tenses and how to use them. So whatever you studied in classes 6 and 7 from present simple to future perfect continuous those were the tenses in active lines. Now I will tell you how to convert them into passive voice. So when we talk about an active sentence subject of that active sentence is doer of an action the action which is stated as verb while the object is the receiver of an action which means in simple words we can say object is the recipient and subject is a doer. But in passive sentence the process becomes turnover. In passive sentence subject becomes the receiver of action while object becomes the doer of action. How it all happens, I will tell you through the rules of passive voice. But this is quite clear that in an active sentence, subject is doer of action while object is receiver of action. On the other hand, in passive sentence, subject is receiver of action while object is doer of an action. It has been exemplified here on the board before you. In an active sentence, we play cricket. We is the subject, play is the verb, and cricket is an object. So the doer of an action in this sentence is we, and the action acted upon is cricket. Hence, it is object. But when we convert the sentence into passive sentence, so you can see here, cricket is played by us. So that now the subject of passive voice is no more the doer of an action, but receiver of an action and the object of passive wise is no more the receiver of an action but the doer of an action. So the sentence we play cricket is converted into passive wise in this way cricket is played by us. So my brothers we have understood the definition of active and passive voice and we have so far studied anyhow what are the rules of passive voice also in class 8. But you can't have a study the reasons for passive voice which means in simple words why do we need to use passive voice in our communication be that written communication or spoken. There are only four reasons for passive voice usage. I'm going to tell you and you can look at the board in front of you. The four reasons written before you are when doer of action which means subject of active sentence doer of an action is a subject of active sentence when doer of action is either understood or unimportant or unknown or hidden any one of these four reasons can be applied for the usage of passive voice when the subject of active sentence in simple words doer of an action is understood we use passive voice not active voice. When the doer of an action which means subject of active voice is unimportant 
we don't use active sentence, we use passive sentence. When subject, which means doer of an action, is unknown. In this case also, we use passive voice, not active voice. And when the speaker wants to hide the subject or the doer of an action in the sentence, he uses passive voice. So, if you ever think that the subject or the doer of an action in this sentence is understood, you have to make passive voice. And if you think that the doer of an action in the sentence is unimportant, you will use passive voice. When you think or when you do not know the doer of an action, then you use passive sentence. And if you want to hide the doer of an action in the sentence from the listener, then we use passive voice. I have exemplified all these four reasons here with the help of sentences. Sentence number one, the criminal has been arrested by police. The active sentence is that police have arrested the criminal. Police have arrested the criminal. It is understood that police always arrest the criminal. So we do not need to use the doer of an action in this sentence. Hence it is understood. When the subject police is understood, we will make passive voice or it is suitable to make passive voice of this sentence. The criminal has been arrested. The listener will himself understand because this is understood that police have arrested the criminal. Second example before you is mangoes are eaten in summer season by people. So here the active sentence of this mangoes are eaten in summer season by people is people eat mangoes in summer season. Do you not think it is unimportant to use the doer of an action in the sentence which is people? Obviously, people eat mangoes. Nobody else like not walls, chairs, tables, buildings will eat mango. Obviously, people eat mango in summer season. So it is unimportant to use the subject of this sentence which is people. Hence, we make this sentence into passive voice mangoes are eaten in summer season. Listener will himself understand and he knows that people eat mangoes. Excuse me. Question number three, sorry. Example number three. My car has been stolen by someone. Here, by someone is unknown. Who has stolen my car? So saying this, this sentence in active voice, someone has stolen my car, doesn't sound suitable. What is more suitable to speak my car has been stolen. A piece of information you are giving to somebody. My car has been stolen. So it is unknown that who has stolen my car. So it is suitable to use this sentence in passive voice. Example number four. I was told a secret by Abdullah. When you want to or the speaker wants to hide the subject or the doer of an action from the listener, he uses passive voice. I was told a secret. Now the listener doesn't know who told you the secret because you want to hide the doer of an action from that listener. I hope you have so far understood about the definition of passive voice and the reasons for passive voice. Now I'm going to tell you the rules for passive voice. Okay, dear students, we have discussed the definition of passive voice. We have discussed the reasons for passive voice. Now I'm going to tell you the rules of passive voice. There are only five rules of passive voice and I'll tell you these five rules step by step. The very first step is parsing. I will explain you in detail what parsing is and what all these five steps are or what these five rules are. So don't worry about it. Let me explain you the five rules first. The first rule is parsing. The second rule is cross technique. The third rule is use of auxiliary verb. We have different auxiliary verbs in passive voice as compared to active voice. So far we have studied in classes 6, 7 and 8 that what are the auxiliary verbs of tenses in active sentence. For instance, in present simple we use do and does, in present continuous we use is MR, in present perfect we use has have and so on and so forth. But now I am going to tell you the use of auxiliary verbs in passive voice and I will give you a chart on the board. You can look at it and you can pause the video that time when you have a chart before you and then you can draw the same chart in your registers. Rule number four, use of past participle form. 
Here I would like to tell you, in every single sentence of passive voice, we always, always, always use past participle form of the main verb. We always use past participle form. For your understanding, I will tell you, we also call past participle form the third form of verb. The third form of verb is the past participle form of the main verb. So we always use past participle form which means third form of verb in every passive sentence and rule number five is use of by. How we will use or apply these rules in an active sentence to convert it into a passive sentence I will tell you step by step now. We will pick up the first rule which is parsing. So in parsing, parsing means identifying subject, verb and object in a sentence. You know that there are different elements of sentence. Sometimes we have subject, verb, object and some additional information is given. For instance, I play cricket with my friends. So in this sentence, I play cricket with my friends in the ground. We can see I is a subject of the sentence. Play is the verb and cricket is an object in the sentence. Whatever is remaining apart from subject, verb and object, we call it additional information for our own understanding. So when you can parse subject, verb and object in a sentence, your 50% problem is solved. Now you can go on to converting this sentence into passive voice further with the remaining four rules. So the first rule has been applied and you have parsed subject, verb and object out of the sentence. Additional information will always remain at its place. You won't make any changes in that. All we have to do is to change or make changes in subject, verb and object. And you will see it step by step. Here we have the second rule which is cross technique. What does cross technique mean? Just for your understanding, I am explaining you here the subject, verb and object. This is an active sentence. And when we convert this sentence into passive voice, we bring this subject here at object position and we bring object at the subject position. The changes what we make when we are converting subject or bringing subject at the object position like for instance if there is I, here at the object position we will use me. If we have V at the subject position here, so when this subject comes at the object position in the passive sentence it becomes us, so and so forth. Same as if there is me as an object at the subject position it will become I. If there is us, it will become V. If there is him, it will become he. If there is her, it will become she. So exchanging the positions of subject and object is called cross technique. And you see, it has been shown on the board with a cross. Now we can further see with the help of example here, how we can apply cross technique on an active sentence while converting into passive sentence. I play cricket with my friends in the ground. As I told you earlier, I is a subject here, play is the verb and cricket is an object. Why? With my friends in the ground is additional information. So we make no changes in additional information. All we have to do is to make changes in subject verb and object. So while converting this sentence into passive voice, we make changes in three elements, in these three elements of sentence, subject verb and object. We bring cricket here at the subject position from object position. And we bring I from subject position to object position. So that becomes cricket and by me. How we convert verb from active sentence to present sentence, I'll tell you in the fourth rule. So in the last sentence is cricket is played by me, and additional information is used as it is when my friends in the ground. So my brothers. Rule number three, auxiliary verbs for passive voice. You can look at the board. 
I have explained this auxiliary verb usage for passive voice with the help of this auxiliary verb chart for passive voice. Here you can see these are the three main tenses past, present and future. And these are subcategories of every tense, simple, continuous, perfect and perfect continuous. Before I go ahead with explaining you the auxiliary verb in each tense, I'll tell you one thing which is very important. There are four tenses out of these 12 tenses for which we do not make any passive voice. And you can look at the chart here. All three perfect continuous categories of three main tenses. Be that past perfect continuous, present perfect continuous or future perfect continuous. And fourth one is future continuous. For these four tenses, we do not make any passive voice. If an active sentence is in any one of these four tenses, we will not make passive voice of that sentence. While we have eight remaining tenses out of twelve, three of past, three of present and two of future. For past simple we have was and verb for passive. For present simple we have is am are for passive and for future simple we have will be and shall be for passive sentence. Same as in passive sentences of present continuous, past continuous and future continuous, sorry, future continuous we have no passive voice. For past continuous and for present continuous we have these auxiliary verbs was being, were being, is being and being, are being. For past perfect we have had been and for present perfect we have has been and have been. So these are eight tenses, three of past, three of present and two of future which can be converted into passive voice and the auxiliary verb for passive sentences are written before you. You can have a look at them and you can memorize these auxiliary verb and later it will help you in converting an active sentence into passive sentence. As you can look at the board again, we have five rules for passive voice. Number one, parsing, we have studied, I have explained you. Number two is cross technique, I have already explained you. Number three is use of auxiliary verb in passive sentences. I have recently explained you about the usage of auxiliary verbs in passive sentences. Now we have the fourth rule, use of past participle form. Whatever form of verb is used in active sentence, you will always use third form of verb which means past participle form of main verb in the passive sentence. Now we are going towards fifth and the last rule that is use of by. So my brothers, rule number five, use of by before the object of passive sentence. When you bring subject of active voice at the position of object in the passive sentence, I becomes me and before that we use by. Same as when you bring we from active sentence as us in the passive sentence to use by us. Same as you becomes by you, they becomes by them, he becomes by him, she becomes by her, it becomes by it and if there is any name given, for instance Ali, it becomes by Ali. So this is the usage of by in passive sentences. I hope you have understood the usage of passive voice how to convert an active sentence into passive sentence. Now we will do some practice of transforming active sentences into passive sentences so that you will have the clear concept of active and passive voice and later we will have some more exercises in the form of multiple choice questions on the paper format. So by now uh, we have understood about all the five rules of passive voice four reasons for passive voice and definition of passive voice. So this is the end of the video session on active and passive voice for you students. In the end of the video you will find your home assignment. You have to do it in your registers as explained you earlier and then you have to submit your registers at the scheduled time. Thank you very much. Assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh.